The National Health Service is 75 years old this year. But what many don't know is that back in 1948, the overwhelming majority of general practitioners, that is family doctors and hospital consultants and specialists, opposed the setting up of the NHS bitterly. The British Medical Association, the BMA for short, polled its members, which included family doctors and hospital consultants, in February of 1948. And by a wide margin, they did not want to work with the new NHS. One former head of the BMA even likened the new National Health Service to something the Third Reich would have set up. He said it would be led by a medical Führer. Just imagine that comment was made only three years after the end of the Second World War when people still had vivid memories of Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany. To give you an indication of the level of opposition among family doctors, among GPs, about 17,000 GPs voted against the NHS, with only 2,500 voting in favour. Among hospital consultants, the vote was 25,000 opposed to the NHS and about 4,000 in favour. The result was correctly described by the BMA as not so much a landslide as an avalanche against the NHS. Now, before I tell you why doctors oppose the NHS, remember to hit the subscribe button and like, if you like, of course, and also comment as you wish. Before the NHS was set up, hospitals were often funded by charitable subscriptions. A hospital bed came at a price and you paid a fee to go and see your GP. At the end of the Second World War in 1945, Winston Churchill and his Conservative Party were wiped out at a general election. Labour was elected on a landslide led by Clement Attlee. And they were absolutely committed to introducing a state-run health service that would provide free health cover for everybody at the point of delivery. That was even going to include all dental work and opticians as well. But from very early on, doctors and dentists made it quite clear that they did not want to be salaried employees of a national health service. They resented the loss of status within the community. And in letters to the newspapers, they even claimed that the government would interfere in treatment and that people would be denied choice. Labour Health Minister Aniron Bevan eventually lost his temper with Britain's doctors and he accused them of sabotage and a squalid political conspiracy. But at the same time, he began to give in to some of their demands, allowing GPs, for example, to retain a degree of independence. He even once made the comment that he had to cram the doctor's mouths with gold in order to get the health service off the ground. In the years that followed, as cost pressures on the NHS began to creep up in the 1950s, dentists and opticians essentially exited the service by degrees. That today has led to what are called dental deserts in some parts of the United Kingdom where people cannot get access to an NHS dentist. The public basically ignored the grumblings of the medical profession and within months of the NHS being set up in July 1948, 93% of the population had registered with the NHS. Frankly, the only reason that the NHS ever got off the ground was because of the support and the enthusiasm that it received from the general population. If it had been left to the medical profession, it would have been strangled in the cradle. Now, there is a link in the description below to a blog post that I've written uh, with supporting evidence from newspapers at the time. And why don't you tell me what you think of the state of the NHS today as it gets ready to celebrate 75 years.